Hi folks, welcome back. Uh, so in the earlier video we saw how we did uh, file drop uh, automation um, and then how do you configure the starting source using the file drop option, right? So in this one we will see how to use the schedule uh, starting source. It's similar to the file drop, we just pull that in and we try to drop it and then go ahead and configure. This one is much more simpler. It's not, there's no file naming patterns, it's just like you have to just define the schedule. So you have to say like, okay, what date do you want to like, you know, start the automation, and what time uh, do you want to like, you know, start to kick that off? So just configure like a date in the future. Uh, you can specify the time zone. Uh, which one do you want to use? Uh, so repeat if you just like do it when like, one time. Uh, you can go ahead and it'll just pause the automation <coughs> till you go ahead and activate it. But then if you want it to be a recurring one, you can have it multiple options. Like you can have it like uh, hourly, meaning like every uh, X number of hours or every hour. Uh, you can have it daily or like every two days, every three, every third day or every seven days, every 15 days. Um, you, you can choose that uh, every weekday. Uh, you can have that option. And if you like, if it's a week weekly thing, like and if you want to do it, like let's say you have a use case where you want to do it on a Monday, Wednesday and probably Saturday, right? Then if you want to like just those three days every week, you can schedule that way. Uh, we can even do it on a, on a monthly basis, like you know, on a particular day of a month, or in the first, or like you know, the the third Saturday or Sunday of a month. Uh, if you want to do it on yearly basis, you can actually specify the month, uh, the specific date in the month, or on a particular day in a month as well, right? And then uh, when you want to end this particular schedule, you can choose uh, either never, like you know, until you go ahead and stop it, or you want to do it after X number of uh, you know times it does run, uh, or on a particular date. Like you know, maybe like you wanted the automation to run only till the end of the year or to the financial year. Like right? so, you you can you know pretty much configure all these options here, and then once you have that in, like you know, you can uh, you can go ahead and and just set that in here when you save it. You will see the schedule is all all set up here, and it will actually tell you like it will repeat on every January first, starting tomorrow, uh, never ending, and what time zone to look at. Something that you will see here is like, you know, there's two states here. One is active and one is paused. Right now it's under paused. And they're not enabled right now because I've not saved it. So once I save it, you will get the option. You have to name the automation. Uh, and then like you can configure the rest of the activities. Uh, and then you can actually go ahead and activate it. And once it's active, then that means that the workflow is live. Like, you know, it will, it will kick off as soon as the schedule, uh, you know, matches whatever you've actually configured. One thing that you will see here, there's an option called run once, which is right now disabled. Once you save it, uh, you will be able to like run this particular automation once, um, like, you know, without even having the schedule to be like, you know, met based on what you've configured, right? Just for you to test it out. So we'll see that in, in one of our future videos, like when we do the workflow examples, how to use the run once to like, you know, test out, uh, you know, various parts of an automation, maybe the whole automation or even parts of the automation. Uh, so that's a feature that you get along with the scheduled automation. Uh, let me quickly go ahead and bring back the file drop from earlier to show you the difference between the two. So let's say I had, you know, I'll just use the file name for now and I'll use the triggered one just to show you this uh, difference. So here you will see when you do the file drop, uh, you will see the same thing as active but an in inactive one. So there's no post here. So it will be inactive and, and it will just tell you like you know what's been configured. It's the triggered automation, the queuing files is yes, and then once it's it's activated it's just going to look for like any file that's dropped into the triggered automation, right? Just like we how we uh, learned from the previous video. But one thing you will notice here is there's no run once option. Uh, what that means is like you'll not be able to like test it out by running the automation from here. It basically kicks off like you know when based on on the file trigger, meaning like it will trigger as soon as you drop a file into the FTP. So the only way that you can actually test this is you should have your FTP access, and then uh, either you or somebody should be able to like you know put that file into that particular folder that you're looking for, and then you can monitor and see like you know if that automation kicks off. So that's the difference uh, in the way that you actually test between the file drop and the schedule. Uh, starting sources. Okay, so uh, that concludes the module on entry sources. So I hope you enjoy the content. Uh, the next week we will be, uh, next videos we will be actually looking at the file transfer activity. Uh, we're actually going to start, you know, uh, looking at some of these activities, starting with the file transfer one. Please do provide your feedback in the comment section, and I'll try to ha help answer any of the questions that you may have uh, in uh, in uh, the videos that we have covered so far. Okay, thank you for watching.